exactly 6 p.m. And so we'll begin and we'll... Okay, are you ready? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Continue. We're good, guys. Thank you. Okay. So, we we'll call this order at 6 p.m. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to the planning board meeting for Wednesday, November 20. As a reminder, this is a public meeting being video and audio recorded for cable broadcasts, future cable broadcasts, and for our future broadcasts on YouTube also. So if you all wouldn't mind standing and joining us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay, well, I'm going to make a motion that we uh, confirm our next meeting date as December 4, 2019, uh, 6 p.m. I'll second. Uh, that, that is the first Wednesday in December, correct? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, motion is made and seconded to confirm the next date for December 4. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that goes. Uh, is Mr. Spellman here? I don't see him here. Okay, so I? he'll have no objection to us. Taking this out of order since he's not here yet. Uh, there's been a request to take item 4C out of order. The individual presenting it has a, a subsequent appointment that he needs to get to. So, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we uh, entertain item 4C. Can we discuss an act for me um, out of order? I'll second. Okay, motion made and seconded to take 4C out of order. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, Mr. Beverly. Thank you. Septic system is okay. the recorded plan for one of the stamps is the same plan. I colored it up a little bit to show what we're proposing. Janet Haley, who is in the audience, owns all of this land where her dwelling is on this side of Middle Street. She also owns this strip and all of the land over here. She presently gets from one piece to the other through easements right of ways coming across the property the what we're proposing to do because this is two lots she acquired a foreclosure sale i believe she acquired the two lots what she is going to pns to sell this house i think to a neighbor the septic system that you see here is actually on the back lot a portion of we located this by survey and a piece of it is over that. So what we're proposing to do is put a line in here, this line, so that the entire septic system will now be on the lot that the house is on. So this pink piece I'm showing here is going to be taken from this parcel and added to this one. And I put that in the note here, that parcel A deducted from lot 11A and combined with lot 11, the orange strip, which is really not of any value to this piece of property, will be taken from this piece of property and then attached to this piece of property. That way she'll own everything from one side to the other. And that'll break that lot out with the house on it. The business residence line comes through here. Bus if business zone requires 18,000 square feet of area. It exceeds that. Well, this is going to remain a separate lot away from all of this. It is correct? right now. Yeah, she okay. probably she not she has no plans to do anything. She just likes the open space. So when, even this one, she's going to have one dwelling on it. She's not proposing anything. She's had it for a long time, and this one also. So it's going to basically yeah. keep everything. If it stays her. that way, this will all be in the one correct. because yeah, correct. <laughs> So that's what the intent is. <coughs> well, that's pretty easy. Yeah. Right? Now that we know what yeah. you're doing. It looked a little long. <laughs> Carrie, yeah, it's me. First look at it. <laughs> I broke out the crayons for this one. It's a little easy to see. All right. 
And if you want to keep this, you can keep this for your records also. That'd be great. I can keep it. Any more discussion yeah. on this point? I don't. I don't. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. The motion's made and seconded to approve the form made plan. Uh, <coughs> just make a motion. We know what to say. We just read this. Yeah, yeah I'll make a motion, then, Mr. Chairman, that we um, approve the form A application of <coughs> Ms. Janet Haley, 901 Middle Street, map 9 lots 111, A and 111A, uh, prepared for uh, Ms. Haley. Um, from Pro Am Engineering. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Motion is made and second to approve the plan as stated. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. Just make sure you sign um, at least three of those paper okay. 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 It's not too far away. It's warm. It's heading back towards the office. <laughs> you know I'm going to wait for some time. Set to move on. Okay. Yeah. Jim, are you representing North Country? Um, I have not spoken to Mr. Spellman. I heard he's very ill. I have no objection if the board's obliged to move it to the end. Take care of all the okay. people. Okay. We'll move on to yep. uh, yeah, item number four B. Then uh, you discuss an act: Wellington Acres and Cedar Streets lights. Um, we had continued. At least the lighting portion until this evening, uh, but we received a request from the residents of Cedar Estates uh, to enter into record uh, a meeting that they had and some of the concerns of the subdivision, which we'll do. Um, the Lopes Company has sent their attorney. But in all fairness to the Lopes Company, um, they had requested. I, I originally had sent this to them because I felt we would, uh, this evening, if we were discussing concerns without them, we, we would get nowhere because we can't dictate to him, he can't dictate to us. So I felt this would be the best way to go. 
So we'll certainly read into record your concerns. And at the end of this, we'll set the date for the next meeting. And just so you'll know, I'll, I did send some of the concerns of the uh, asphalt job uh, with the, uh, where the driveways met the road. So I sent that to a highway superintendent to get his comments, because he's going to be the one plowing the roads ultimately <coughs> when we accept the roads. So, um, I don't know if you have any questions. I'm not going to debate or discuss the issues, but, you know, we will read this into the record. This was uh, a residence meeting on November 17th, 2019. Uh, the attendees were Chris Adams, Rob Blanchett, Jeff Cavallo, Chris Isabor, Paul Kelly, Mike Maduris. Uh, they took official notes. Uh, would you like me to read the meeting notes and or just the concerns or both? Uh, just, you can skip to the second page uh, for the concerns. The concerns? Okay. prefer to read the whole thing if you don't mind. Sure. Okay. Uh, the meeting started at 1 10 p.m. and discussion revolved around road quality of Tommy's and Billy's is poor throughout. Uh, poor seam along the middle of the road likely to buckle over the winter. Poor transitions into several driveways where road to sidewalk to driveway levels all vary and likely to break with winter weather stress and plow utilization. Poor Cape Cod berm construction along roadside uh, is not compressed and likely to fall apart over the winter months and with any direct vehicle tire contact. Concrete ramps constructed on the corner of uh, Billy's and Tommy's <clears throat> and on the corner of Tommy's and Cedar are already cracked from vehicle traffic. I did witness that so did mr ryan's mm -hmm. so we did go up there and check some of the uh, problems that were up there okay. uh inconsistent grass stripping alongside a road with sidewalks requirement was for a minimum two foot grass strip current construction varies with lot three for 20 inches lots two and 10 21 inches and lot 20 19 inches Town now requires three street lights to be located in the development. Light number one at the corner of Billy's and Cedar, <coughs> light two at the corner of Tommy's and Cedar, and light three at the corner of Billy's and Tommy's. Per the last meeting, the planning board is likely to allow all three of these to be done via a solar street, so, solar street light solution. Development residents request that the two lights along Cedar one and two above be mounted to the existing telephone poles and tied to line voltage. Residents also request the light on Tommy's number three above where the solar or line voltage needs to move closer to the road to be effective. Current proposed location on lot seven, Mr. Bernardo is too far from the roadway to effectively light the intersection. Unsafe driving speed and disregard for stop signs on Tommy's continues to be a problem. We need a solution for the safety of the children in the neighborhood. Doing nothing is not acceptable to the residents. Residents request lighted and stripped, or striped I would guess, stop signs be installed and speed humps considered as a safe alternative to the previously used speed bumps. Lighted stop signs are being regularly rolled out of Rehoboth and speed humps are a good snow plow safe design and have been used in other neighborhoods with good results. Confusion at the rotary is also a concern and signage is requested to ensure safety as vehicles approach the rotary structure. Stormwater Basin along Lot 8, uh, Mr. Isabor has a broken plastic outlet. This item was discussed at a previous planning board meeting uh, minute number 28 of planning board meeting on 17 October 2018. 
developers stated they would address but not have corrected yet. Sprinklers removed or damaged during sidewalk installation remains unfixed. Residents on lot 20, Mr. Adams, and lot 18, Mr. Isbor, request sprinklers are moved and repaired. To the town of Dighton, complete streets policy, effective 29 June 2016, signed by the Board of Selectmen. Cedar <coughs> Estates should paint bicycle shadows on roadway directing bicycle traffic in a development along Tommy's and Billy's to be prepared for future upgrades along Cedar Street. Meeting was adjourned at 2.15 and the neighborhood walk was connected, conducted to make additional measurements and take photos of items addressed above. And I, I did see your pictures um, that received. I think it went out to all board members, correct? Okay, would you like to read the... Uh, no, you don't. Sure, I have one. <coughs> this is a summary request to the Dighton Planning Board for the Cedar Estates residents. Street lights in the development installed in the following configuration. A, two street lights along Cedar, parentheses, corner of Billy's and Tommy's, mounted to the existing telephone poles and tied to the line voltage. Item B, street light on Tommy's, corner of Billy's slash Tommy's, where the solar or line voltage needs to be moved closer to the road. Current proposed location on lot 7, parentheses, Bernardo, is 15 feet 4 inches from the roadway and too far to effectively light the intersection. Item C, estimated replacement cost for the solar street light on lot 7 placed in escrow by the development to offset first maintenance required for the light. Item number two, crosswalk and stop lines painted on roadways at the intersection of Billy slash Tommy's. Three, motion sensor flashing stop signs with red striping installed at the intersection of Billy slash Tommy's. Item number four, Replace broken plastic storm water outlet on lot 18 Isidore with concrete outlet to match the remainder within the development. Item 5. Paint bicycle shadows in roadway along till, till, excuse me, Tommy's and Billy's per the town of Dayton Complete Streets Policy effective 29 June 2016 signed by the Board of Selectmen in parentheses. Item number 6. Install four speed humps along Tommy's way to manage continued high vehicle speed issues. Item number 7. Install rotary warning signage leading into rotary at the end of Tommy's. Item number eight, repair backslash move sprinklers on lot number 20, parentheses Adams, and lot 18 Isidore, in parentheses. Item number nine, feather transitions into cellar driveways to include a minimum, parentheses, detailed walkthrough necessary to address all roadway transitions into driveways. A, lot 10 Jackson. B, lot 12 Josh. Lot C, I'm sorry, Lot 13, Hawes. Lot 20, Adams. Lot 17, Madeiras. Item number F, Lot 16, Ferrera, Burham completely unbroken along driveway entrance. Item number 10, finished sidewalk on Lot 3. Sidewalk ends at dirt driveway and reduces in width leading into Cedar Street. Sidewalk also has inconsistent transition onto Billy's ahead of sidewalk concrete ramp. Item number 11. Consider installation of sidewalk along Cedar connecting Billy's and Tommy's requires removal of illegal wooden fence on lot 3, which is a hazard for vehicles turning onto Cedar from Billy's. Parentheses, fence is at 4 feet from Cedar Street. Uh, item number 12. Reinstall street sign at the corner of Billy's and Cedar. Item number 13, install protection for concrete sidewalk ramps and repair broken ramps. Protection would assure ramps would not be damaged if vehicles drive over. Item number 14, baseline all storm drains in the development and provide third party assessment of the system with annual maintenance estimate to assist in homeowners association management. Item number 15, address lack of minimum of two foot of grass strip required along sidewalk Required along sidewalks along lots 2, 3, 10, and 20. Item number 16, address misplaced power distribution blocks located between lot 11, Madeiras, and lot 10, Jackson. Um, the only one thing I want to clarify, I know we're going to discuss it, but um, <coughs> on item number 9, we talk about the transitions into the driveway. On lot 10, 12, 13, 20, 17, and 16. Are these all Tommy's? What? Some of these are, these are all in Cedar States. So some of them are on Tommy's and some of them are on Billy's. 
Tommy's and Billy's? Both. Yes, okay. And there's actually one more lot, lot nine. My lot, my second driveway has is one of the pictures in there where at one point in the driveway on the left hand side it's higher. The road's okay. higher than the driveway and the other side it's lower than the driveway. So either so way, we're 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 gonna gonna add add to that. Yes, please. Okay. What's the number of the house? Very good picture, by the way. Thank number you. Of the house. Okay. We another copy. Uh, anybody have any clarification, clarification questions that they want to ask um, regarding the request? Yeah. Um, I know, like, I think you've been in in uh, contact with with Joe Touch uh, regarding a future date where everybody is available. Did you reach a? Have we reached a date that is suitable? <coughs> well, I had talked to attorney Zay Jack, and we had determined, I think January. you had mentioned. January 15th? Yeah. Yeah. January 15th. Okay. Is everyone a follow up Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, I'm hopeful that some of these things, weather permitting, if it's possible this time of the year, will be addressed. Uh, I had a conversation with, with uh, Mr. Touch. Um, after I emailed him this, and he explained to me what was going on, and there are, you know, I, I think it would be more productive if all parties are together, yourselves, ourselves, and the uh, builder. Uh, there are some things that certainly can be dealt with. There are some things that may require a little bit of movement on either side to, to reach agreement on what's best for everyone. Um, there may be some things we may have to get involved with, uh, you know, hopefully not. So I hope we have a good resolution when it's all said and done. So um, we'll see you guys January 15th. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, yeah. If, I, if I may address you. Uh, um, before you begin, Mr. Caval, I just sure. want to make a motion that the planning board accept the information from the Cedar States residents meeting that was just read into record. So I'll look at the second. Okay, motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. I also need a motion to continue our discussion on this matter until January 15th. So moved. Second. Of 2020. So, okay. <laughs> All right, motion made and seconded to continue this to January 15th of 2020. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. That carries also. See you then. Mr. I, I have a number of questions, Mr. Chairman. Jeff Kamal, 21, 24 Tommy's way. Um, so there were a number of things we wanted to talk about. I guess we pulled off, but um, the uh, one thing I wanted to ask is, uh, I, I ran this by uh, uh, earlier, but uh, it, would it be possible if somebody from the board uh, went with us, if Joe Touch or somebody from Lopes wanted to do a walkthrough with the residents to, to look at some of these things? Because uh, obviously he, he responded back. You've probably seen his response. And there was a number of things that he said were outside of the scope of what they were doing, and that's that's the give and take. We're good with yeah, that. Yeah, one of us, or two of us, will be, we can't have any more than two, but two of us will be yeah, happy. Yeah, so, and um, wondering how we can get your availability. He said he can meet us as early as this Friday at some point to walk through. It's supposed to be nice out, so it'll be a good day to, good afternoon to walk through the neighborhood. Okay. Do you have a time frame? Uh, Two-ish. I can't guarantee. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, um, yeah. I think Joe said any time Friday. So, <coughs> okay. Sun, I prefer, sun, sun's up. I prefer the morning if possible. Is I can sit some things to do in the afternoon Friday. Okay. Um, but I can make it. Yeah, that'd be great. Much, so. Okay. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, at least one of us will try to get out okay. there. Yeah. I mean, between you I and I, uh, Joe, right. Joe does nothing now. Uh, oh, 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 that is recording. Oh, 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 that's a bad one. All right, let us know. You can go through Kerry. Sure. Yeah. Um, okay. No later than Thursday because that's the last day yeah. of the work week for us. Well, I mean, uh, wide open. <coughs> if, you're, if you're not sure, we'll just we can pick a time and I can yeah. text. Actually, you we have all out. our the board's emails too, so if you just throw it out there. One of us will go. Okay. All right. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. We'll Thank see you. you in January. Yeah. Have a happy year. Thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I second it. The motion made second approved the minutes of November 6, 2019. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. okay. Well, since our last meeting, uh, we, or the meeting prior to that, we had some discussion regarding uh, activity uh, North Country Auctions, the which one? Is, which number is it? 1886. Correct. 1886. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the property on 1886. The old Daddio's building was demoed, and uh, Mr. Spellman <laughs> began parking his trucks over there, and we were concerned about whether. Uh, site plan review was needed or not needed, but we didn't have any information on what he was attempting to do over there. So we had asked him to come in. Um, he couldn't make previous meeting, but he requested this meeting. Now I understand he's sick. I didn't talk to him, but I understand he's very ill. I'm not sure what he has. Okay. But that would be reason um, he's not here, I guess. Yeah. If nobody objects, Jim could, and if he's willing to, uh, our commissioner could speak for Mr. Spellman. I think I'll speak to about the bylaw and the site plan review. I'm not going to speak for Mr. Well, Spellman. I have a couple. Yeah. So, yes, yeah. Well, I have a couple of questions, which sure. on, DC. would right. help me make a decision on the property, whether it's going to be a <coughs> site plan review or not. Okay. Uh, number one after in-depth review of the same uh, sections of our zoning bylaws 10 times, I think I read them. And there's a couple of things I'm thinking. Now, there's going to be no new construction. Correct, as far as I know. And prior to Daddio's being demoed, how many parking spaces were available? In excess of 100. Excess of 100? Yes. All right. On that lot? On that lot, that's it's short for the old site plan review. Is it that much? I know. <coughs> it's, a big, it's a big problem. It's a big problem. Yeah. How many? An acre, right? Yeah, it's a little over an acre. Yeah. So, the whole I, septic I have system, to guess. The whole septic system on the right side is all asphalt. parking. Right. I, I have to guess that number has reduced because of the size of vehicles involved. 40 to 50. 40 to 50. Is, is that within the ratio of what 100 automobile parking spots would be, if you know what I'm alluding to? Uh, no, but... <laughs> He's looking at a white to say, say if yeah. I can track the trail on that. So, it takes, takes up two regular parking right, spaces. Right, so, right, right. So, yeah, yeah, so let me, let me clarify why <laughs> I didn't send him here for site plan review. First, the demolition is not a triggering event. If you read the bylaw, it does not meet the definition in the bylaw. A commercial parking lot is a permitted use in a business district. There was already a parking lot on the property. He did not asphalt, he didn't expand it. He didn't do any of the sorts. So in my professional opinion, there was no requirement of this board to be involved. Now, I will say to you, if he proposed a, a structure or he had the auctioneer stand in the middle of that lot, then it would be a different story. But all he's doing is parking vehicles there. Now, that said, he does need to modify his license with the Board of Selectmen because he does have an auction license with the Selectmen. And now he has increased the number of vehicles that he uh, has available. But if you read the bylaw, word for word, there was no trigger or event. And I stand by that decision. Yeah, the only possible one, and that's for the members to decide on 5412, uh, on page 67 of our zoning bylaws, construction or expansion of a parking lot for municipal, institutional, commercial, industrial, or multifamily structure or purpose. So, was a construction or expansion of a lot? 
I, I think so, that's what it's boiling down to. And the lot was already existing. But the lot was existing. There was no asphalt put down. There were no curb cuts applied for. And the number of spaces used is actually less than the number of spaces that were there previously. That's why. But in fact, it is an expansion of, of a lot. I mean. But it's not an expansion as defined in the bylaw for the site plan review. Construction or expansion of a parking lot for an existing institutional commercial and residential purpose. The lot didn't get any bigger. No, the lot didn't get any bigger. <laughs> but I just have a question on it, and I, you know. So. Prior business has been defunct for 10 years. He's grandfathered in because he buys the property. The, the, it's a business. The rights reverse right over It's them. a restaurant and a business. It's zone. been Absolutely. defunct for 10 years. It doesn't matter. You don't lose your pre existing yeah, status. That's, yeah, that's true, too. Come on. Yeah, There's protections he, in he, the general but laws. He didn't, the business but but he, didn't own the, he didn't own the lot prior it to. It doesn't matter. It's a business zone. I'm just asking a question. That's all. Yeah, I'm giving you an answer. It's a restaurant and a business zone that has a right to be there. Correct. The commercial parking lot has a right to be there. Correct. But the business had been defunct for 10 years. It's then irrelevant. He takes over ownership. It's so irrelevant. It's also a different type of business. But I'm just asking, how would that grandfather It's run? still an allowed use. It's, it's still an, an allowed it's use. It's an allowed business. Correct. But it is a different, a different type of business. Then if that's what your bylaw said, I would have sent them for site plan review. That's not what your bylaw says. Your bylaw for site plan review is triggered specifically on a permittable event. Expansion of an existing structure, alteration of existing yeah. structure, yeah, expansion of a parking lot, alteration of a parking lot. None of that happened. It was all there. I'm not trying to be at odds. I'm trying to read the bylaw as it's written and I, help promote just, business. I'm just going by in, in previous experience that I've had that if it's whatever type of business it is, if you and it closes for a period of two years or more, that's on Most cities and towns? No, I, I'm just... Yeah, I'm, I'll, all right, I'm gonna, I, I didn't read it. I'm going to explain to you. Okay. When you have a non-conforming business, I agree with you. There are no protections for non-conforming businesses. That's a conforming business in a business zone. You can't take the rights away from a matter of right business. That would be illegal. If you have a non-conforming business, then what you say, Joe, is accurate. 24 month statute of limitations after that, so you, you lose your status. Yeah. But not in a conforming business in a conforming zone. You don't. I just think the difference of, of the different types of business, I thought it would have something but, to but do But your bylaw with. doesn't say change of, change of business say. use. No, it doesn't. Right. Yeah, it doesn't address yeah. that. It doesn't address, address that. that. Okay. Right. right. If that's something that this board wants to see, then I would encourage you to change, change it. Problem. I will tell you that I will speak yeah. against it because to me that's anti-business. Oh, and you know? we don't need that. Right, anymore. exactly. We don't, we don't need that at all. Not with a $27 tax rate, you don't know. So we're talking right. a change of property use is what Joe was talking about. Right, exactly. But in this case, <clears throat> that 24-month statute of limitations does not apply. Yeah, I know how that one applies. Right. And we don't have that on our bylaws at all. Right. Not for matter of right uses, no. I, that would be illegal. I, I don't think the state would ever ratify that, if, even if you tried. Right. Yeah. yeah, basically. So, yeah. yeah. Now, if the board, if the board was so inclined, I would support something of that nature in the bylaw on a business that had been closed for extended periods of time, because yeah, I think it does. But that's not how it's written. Yeah, yeah. And I can't make people do things that aren't in between the books. It's just, it's not right. Well, I can tell you I've twisted right. this all kinds of ways and uh, I agree with your uh, interpretation by what it says in the book. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've read numerous times myself back and front. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that um, I have to agree with your interpretation because there is no stipulation in our bylaws to state anything as such. Right. So. right. If, and if, maybe that's another one of those things we, we need to tweak a little bit to. But uh, yeah, if we well, try to, to what? That's we may be well, yeah, non business, non -business, business friends. friends. Yes, yeah, I think. That's the thing. I would we want to careful. encourage business yeah. as much yeah. as we possibly can, exactly. I would we be need careful. that more than anything. Yeah. 
and there's no denying, you know, I'm a pro-business individual, but by the same token, I can't exempt them from what it says in the books, and I don't intend yeah. to. But I'm also not going to make them do things that they don't have to either. Okay. So. Um, as far as the, the amount of area that he's occupying there, has conservation been talking to them at all? Or? I know conservation has been involved. He has visited, visited the site. I know that the selectmen actually required an engineer plan to be submitted for the modification of his license, which he's, I'm told, obliged to. I don't know if it's happened or not yet. Um, are you aware if that's happened or not? I yet? haven't heard anything more. Okay. I know that they have requested, right. and he met with them right. to find out the specifics of what they needed, and then he was going to meet with them again after our meeting. Right. Now, I suggested to him uh, when I found out that the selectmen were requiring an engineer plan to be drawn, that the selectmen or him himself give it to this board for your records, which I think would probably make you feel better. You know, yeah. uh, you know, I don't know that we need feeling better, but you know. well, well, I, well, <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it was that this board was after. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, throwing it out there. I think know? based on the letter that it's was just, sent, we just want to see what the future. What is he thinking of doing there? As far as I know, the only thing he's doing is exactly what's there now. I don't know of any just buildings that are proposed. Just expanding the footprint, just to park more vehicles for yeah. auction, right? Now, in your just so we play this out, had he come to me or comes to me in the future and says, I'm going to put this type of building there, you got to come in front of this board. That's a triggering event, irregardless of what it's for, whether it's a matter of right use or not, because now, according to those two sections of the bylaw, that's a triggering event. But not, that didn't happen. Okay. I mean, I can't speak for the rest of the board, but when I saw it, being torn down and then you know it was cleared out and then you know all of a sudden we see trucks being parked there I was like what's this guy trying to do circumvent circumvent me about zoning by law yeah I I, mean, I I mean I stopped and thought about it and I said well maybe he spoke to Jim and Jim right, you know and right. but yeah, it was just I, you know things go off in your head you know yeah you and, and that, you know? I've always had an open dialogue yeah. when you see that call me and I'll, I'll come in and we'll talk about it like we're doing tonight mm -hmm. all right I have no problem with that. So I think we ought to make it official that a site plan review under the circumstances as it stands is not required or will not be required. Unless there's a triggering, Unless there's a triggering event. So yeah. Any type of construction or uh, enlarging that, well, that's a lot, a standalone lot anyway, right? It is. Yeah. Yeah, it was before. It was yeah. a standalone. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what the long-term plans are. I've not had any, or been privy to any of those discussions there. No, we just—I just think the board just wants some clarification on, yeah. you know, some business footprint expansion. It's like, you know, what happened. So, you know. yeah, especially in a—it's in a very highly visible location. Oh, sure. On, on a highway, and people drive by and say, "Well, what's he doing?" Right. So now we're getting uh, right getting that, you know. Right. So. <laughs> You know, I was going to go by. Everybody questions us and board members. Yeah, and I, I want you to have the answers, so just call me in. We'll, I'll come in and we'll talk. You know? And honestly, you're driving by as a resident. I see the um, exterior improvements that he's made around the perimeter. I, I think it looks good. It's, you know, it's, yeah. it's, well, listen, it's a building that I don't have to take down. That was, I was, I was now looking forward to that day. <laughs> For the type of business that it is, I think he, he does a good job. Yeah. Yeah. He's addressed the concerns yeah. that have come up. So. It's, um, it's, it's clean. Um, I've been through quite a few times myself. You don't see any um, vehicles leaving the facility, you know, leaking, uh, you know, transmission fluid, hydraulic fluid, uh, any of that. I yeah. haven't seen that either. I haven't seen any of that. The other <laughs> thing, he's addressed us the the other thing, The other thing you don't see, uh, there were a couple of complaints about lighting early on through the selectman's office that we addressed. But the other thing that you don't see or hear, at least if I'm wrong, tell me, is people complaining, especially other businesses. They are all flourishing when the auction oh, yeah. comes to town. Absolutely. So, oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, the business community has sort of been given a little boost with three or 400 people coming to town on that day or weekend. So, yeah, at least the, the yeah. media yeah. there. Right, right. You know, yes. I, I think you knew this subject was going to come up amongst the board. Um, it does state in the bylaws 
message of the, you know, there are no banners to be used, no lights, certain right. signs, that type of thing. Right. Um, I don't know who gave him the authority to, if, if the ZBA gave, granted him a variance for, say, three days prior to or three days after, that may be a suggestion that we cover all bases for everybody. That way there is no complaints. But then again, that may open up where if we, if the ZBA decides to do it for one with bands, then you may see them all over town. Do we want to run into that? I don't, I don't know. I don't so know. I, you and I have talked about this. There are lots of businesses that use banners to advertise. Uh, most of, oh, you, get, pick most of you get okay. the coffee there in the morning every day. Right. So, you know, it's not that I turn a blind eye to them, but again, if I get a legitimate complaint that the banner is a problem, we'll address it. I don't really see the issue with them. Well, he did in the beginning. There was a problem because there was well, so they were out, the highway. They were out all the time. Back, and and they right, back. he's not so done that. He's they taken out them down. Yeah. In the right. distance talk, from where they were originally. I think you can agree that we, after I talk to them, they're not out. Yeah. They're out just when the auction occurs. And if they create a traffic hazard, then they'll be addressed. Um, again, you know, I, I, I don't have an issue, but uh, I also don't want to handcuff the businesses in town. Oh no, I'm not. No, I'm not, not. And I'll be honest. Being I'm myself. not a selective enforcement uh, authority. If someone's, if, if you want me to take care of banners, I'm going up and down 138 and 44. Everybody's going to take that's banners. Understood. Now. And that's so, just the way it should be. Yeah. So do we want to proceed with that motion at this time? Mm -hmm. Just. I think I now make a motion. We should just for the record. <laughs> yeah, that's what. Yeah. I, that's how I feel. Yeah. I think as the there is not a necessity for uh, site plan review for the property as it exists today. Yeah, and if there's any changes, by all means. So if you want to make a motion, make a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion that uh, North Country Auctions, located at uh, 1886 County Street, um, does not nor need at this time a site plan review for the expansion of their business. I'll second that. Okay, motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you, Jim. Thanks, While we're on the site plan, I, I'd like to do some public input before correspondence. And if you open your pages, if you have your books, to page 69, section 5460, says minor site plan. Mm -hmm. As I was going through this, and I remember, and we all remember, I don't know if Woody was here at the time, or if Tim was here, we, on the one, two, third sentence down, we changed the word or to and. Yeah, I know that. Now, I, I, my opinion, when we changed that from or to and, that became less restrictive. Because now, the, the person, whereas before, mm -hmm. only one of those events triggered the need for a site plan review. Now they must have both. Now they must have both gross floor, gross floor area of 2,000 square feet mm -hmm. and also uh, more than 10 parking spaces. So I think it became less restrictive. I don't know how you read it. That's how I read I'm, it. I'm going through it right now. I'm trying to dissect it. So the third sentence and down. Not that's generate the need for 10 more than 10 bucks shown before the minor site. It does get, yeah. but you've got to read it. Yeah. I read it several times. I just want to make sure you look at that while I'm looking at it. Mm. <laughs> Any other discussion? Okay. Any other Am I the public you're looking for input for? You're it, pal. If if the word and is in a bylaw, you have to meet the fore and aft sections of that yeah. sentence. So both have to apply. Whereas before only one of them. Right. So it became less restrictive. Right. Now do we want to keep it and or do we want to change it back to or? So it only requires one, one or the other. That's a trigger in the back, which the is the way it was for years. Mm -hmm. Or not, or both, right? Or like going changes to or, it'll only have to meet one requirement, right? Correct. Right. right. You would be more restrictive on business. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to change that. Then would become more restrictive if it's all. If That's it's what or, we just talked about. Because then it would be either one. Yeah. Two thousand is not a huge. It's not. No. Not, it's not, area, not at all. 
What's the legalese again behind this? I'm sorry? The legalese behind this again? The way it was written was previously yeah. was more restrictive than what it was changed to. Right now, the way it's written, you have to meet both. Both. both when? If it's only one, then they don't need site plan review. So the word it should say and or. No. no. It says no. either one. Either one. It has to be one yeah. or the other. What I'm saying is right now and means it's more lenient on the property owner. If it said or it's more restrictive right. on the property owner. Because then it's 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 only one trigger event instead of two that happen to have have, have to happen simultaneously. Is that the reason you did it to be less restrictive? I don't remember well, when it was changed. I don't we, remember why we no, we if you remember, there was an applicant who came in it was and submitted it. Yes. Yeah. They had a 9,000 square foot building, but weren't doing no additional more than a couple of parking spaces. spaces. Right. I think that was um, on the Cedar Street. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we had an or on there. It was an or, and so that's why he was requesting the minor site plan review because he was not meeting the Which 10 parking spaces. You know, we minor said, site plan is no big deal either. We've had people come in with hand drawn. Yeah, so exactly. we take hand on it. That's your sketch. We but I don't want to be hand. restrictive either. No. We changed so it's it the same hand. thing. No, it's not because no, no. it's not. No, because had he come in with the application, then he would have had to do a major site plan review. Right. Okay. Right. That's the, that's the, okay, yeah, that's yeah, the sure, trigger. Sure, sure. Yeah. Oh, yes. And now that none you read mm -hmm. that. I that know. Adds. 10 parking spaces does seem to be a little excessive for 2,000 square feet as you really look at it. Well, it depends on the business. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. If it's a Any convenience business. store, then yeah. it may require yeah. it. If right. It's, you know. Right. And you could open up a, a 2,000 square foot building and do a restaurant in there that's booming and you, you need a hundred parking spaces, well maybe not a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> but you need ten. Okay. You know, at least yeah. at least that. <laughs> but I mean those those are the things that I think we should have the saying in it depending on the business. Yeah. I think that could be uh, I'm, not for, I'm not for making it too restrictive now with after we've discussed it. You know, because we do want business in town. We definitely need it. Yeah, and this board has been promoting businesses with the overlays and the, mm -hmm. the zoning changes, so. I'm not getting any of it. Okay. Well, there's a little bit going on. <laughs> really? There's a little So bit. for now, the consensus is we can leave it alone, but if you want to bring it up down in the future. Yeah, I, th I think it's safe to say um, leave it as is, and yeah. if it needs tweaking in the future, then we'll tweak it in the future. Yeah. Well, that's fair. Okay. Um, uh, I tend to agree with that also. Have the reading yeah. and then uh, having Jim's explanation really with the puzzle together. That was my pu any public input. Are <laughs> she looking for any more? <laughs> do we, now can we do correspondence? Do we have to do this one? I don't know. You have not done uh, correspondence. Yet. I have not. Well, what are you guys looking for? Huh? Um. This information is um, it's a WPA Form 1 request for determination of applicability. Oh. This is the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Um, I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to read with this. What is it, what is it for? This is for yes. applicant Michael Rodriguez of 65 Holly Tree Lane in New Bedford, 774-929-5757. Phone number? What was the property at? And the property yeah. is located. No. Different guy. Different guy. Okay. Yeah. Much as far yeah. information and input anyway. As far as I know, different guy. The septic system site plan um, for Michael Roberts that uh, was done by Senator Fitzgerald Gilbert Associates. Yes, sir. And this is. It should be in the title block. That's what I thought. It should be right in the title block. Ready? 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 Ready?
assesses map um, lot 2A, assesses map 12, uh, map 14, lot 16, that's 2A. And this is, this is Smith Street. This is Smith Street. The septic system the site septic, plan. Yeah. yeah, it's mystery. It's going to be Smith, yeah, it's mystery. We'll get this mystery. So this is before you what? It's just information. This is we're, just being, information. we're just oh, being okay. notified. That's, oh, that's, that's all. Right. Oh, it came to you. Oh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I got it. I got right. it. Okay. So this is a proposed home. Mm -hmm. So this is a new lot. Is this a retreat lot or a form A lot? I believe that was one of the retreat lots that oh, they okay. approved. Uh, okay, so that makes sense. A while ago. All right. Ooh. That's curious. That's Second well, communication is just the, the Beacon Very Magazine, well. and this comes in every month um, to the municipality here, and it goes out to um, all the parties in town. And um, if you get an opportunity, do start stop in town hall. You see this on the desk out front. Uh, Take a boost through this because a lot of times it'll tell you um, what um, legislation is coming up um, in the House and the Senate with the conference committee, that type of thing, job hirings and uh, postings. So um, it's, it's a good reference. Um, it's the beacon, and again, this goes uh, comes directly to the town guide. Oh, I'm I have a little. I just want to bring this up. Only because I thought of it, and it's regarding the senior estates. Remember when we were told that Matt Rochelle said leave it the way it is? A lot of them, the driveways, weren't in place yet. They did the grounds and they, and they did the road, but a lot of them hadn't blocked off their driveway yet. And maybe that's the reason why, but that yeah, could be. Yeah. Um, are we going to get Peter that day to come down? Okay. Yeah, he was going to come tonight, but because we weren't going to discuss yeah, anything, yeah. I totally Yeah, I would off. just like to just continue with that. I know that um, we had that discussion earlier about um, Tommy's way. There was some information that did come down from our engineers, um, and it's in a record. And I'd like to bring those records out and have those available um, for the people who live in that development and then get a look at that. Because our engineer went out and looked at uh, when the pavement was done. and. Um, it was certified that day, so. But there are a few things that I looked at myself. I'm not an engineer, I work in the business. Mm -hmm. I did want to convey to the residents, and I did have the opportunity to, that um, just let them know that most asphalt plants close December 15th. So between now and the 15th yeah. of December, you're not gonna get a lot of work done. So. And you really don't want it done about this time. Exactly. No, right. you know, you'd rather have a oh, medium yeah, heat yeah. of 50, 55. I, I heard two things tonight with that, and if I'm here, so I'll, I'll, I'll make them known if you're willing to listen. The comment about the bicycle lanes uh, in conformance with complete streets, I'm not sure you can apply that to a subdivision that was previously approved before complete streets was enacted. So that's one thing. The second thing is the street lights that are proposed on the existing telephone poles on Cedar Street, you can't do that either. No, I'm not part of that subdivision. Yeah. Right, you can't we, do that. we couldn't yeah. make any comments on right. that. I, I, yeah, I just, uh, yeah. That, that in your decision making, yeah. yeah. Well, I wanted to bring that myself. Have a field <laughs> day with us. <that> yeah. <laughs> National Grid can put them up there, but not you yeah. or us. <laughs> okay. Thanks. One of the little clarifications. That's all. I got you. And we appreciate. Um, I just like to say, you know, we appreciate the uh, building commissioner coming out. Um, you know, he has a busy schedule during the day. He's, um, you know, I've. I go around town quite a bit, and I see him out at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the afternoon most days. And um, Jim, I don't know how you do. You have a long day, and thanks for being here. And we, all, we all do our part. But thank you. Yeah. We all do. We're not, uh, not everybody has the time that Joe has. Yeah, time. Time. <laughs> I'll now call you tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock. <laughs> so and bring a brush. At, at this time, I'm going to make an uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll second that motion. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Good night, Cables. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Cables.